What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerdcastle for the next episode of the Nerdcastle Weekend Review. My name is Splattercat, happy to be here today to sit and chill and talk about all the things going on at the channel. If you didn't know, this is a series that was created by the Patreon backers by reaching a certain threshold on Patreon with their monthly donations. And so the next one up is actually where I sit down and I'll talk with a YouTuber. I haven't really decided on a schedule for it, but basically like a 30 minute, one hour chat with another YouTuber that you guys kind of suggest or comment. If you don't have one, I'll just pick one that I know and we do our thing. But either way... Thank you, Patreon backers, because this video series wouldn't happen without it if you don't know what Weekend Review is. It's a bit of time where you and I sit down for a while and we talk about what's going on with the channel organization-wise. Maybe crack a few jokes and just have a good time. And I give you some of the... It's kind of like if you have like the DVD with like the behind-the-scenes stuff. It's sort of like that with the series as well. And so right now, the channel's kind of in a weird spot. we got a lot of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of things to go over. I don't think this is going to be too overly long of a video. I think this one should be fairly short because a lot of the stuff we have going on right now is stuff that we had already going on last month, but eh, it should be fine. We'll get started here. Uh, let's start with Stardew Valley, actually. Stardew Valley is one of those games that, I mean, what more can I say about it? I think we were playing it two weeks ago when I first started off on the Weekend Review series. I think that was like two or three days after I had started it, but what, what can I say that hasn't already been said about it? I mean, behind the scenes, there's not really much to say. The game is simply fantastic. I mean, the developers did a really, really good job with it, and it's one of those games that I hope garners a lot of success and launches a very, very successful and bright career. It's a game that I didn't expect to be as good as it is. I figured it would be alright, because in general, Chucklefish, they tend to produce fairly solid, fairly clean games. And so usually when I see that Chucklefish has something new coming out, I keep it on my radar just to, just to watch out for it. And, you know, just keep the blip on the horizon so that I can cover it when it comes out. Stardew Valley is definitely one of those titles. Very, very solid effort on the part of the developer Confused Ape or whatever his name was. I like everything about it, and really the thing that I like best about Stardew Valley is that it's a game that suits a lot of playstyles. And the thing about Stardew Valley, what I mean there, is that like you can play a lot of combat in that game. You can play a lot of farming in that game. Like obviously you're going to have to do some farming, and if you bought the game without knowing that you're going to have to farm, you probably should have read the description on the box or something like that, but it's given PC gamers a replacement for Harvest Moon. Since that never came to the PC, it was never available. They kept it as like a first party title over at Nintendo. It was only a matter of time before somebody else stepped in and took that spot, and that's exactly what Stardew Valley has done. It's a really, really fun game. It's got a lot of cool things going on in it. I love the little storyline snippets you get and how you start to learn about the townspeople and their past and all the random stuff that's going on. A very, very remarkable effort. I, I don't think I could have designed anything like Stardew Valley. The first game I ever made would probably be just like some random platformer or some shit that was terrible and got like a thousand bad reviews on Steam. It's hard for me to judge. But it's a, it's a pretty badass game. We're getting kind of deeper in our current playthrough. We're getting deeper down into the dungeon right now. We did some weapon upgrading over the course of the last week. Very excited about the way that that's going to pan out. Increasing your DPS is going to make it much easier to just mash your way through the dungeons much more rapidly. And we were struggling with that because we were still using like that level 5 sword or whatever that we'd gotten from like the 10th floor. And it just wasn't doing it. It wasn't holding it down once we started to get down to like the ice layer, like level 40 or 50 or whatever. Things just had too much HP for us to get through. In the meantime, over this week, we had been poor and we had been rich and so we're coming back now we actually had had some empty pockets at the beginning of the week and by now we're starting to recover and things are starting to come back in and I really do think that the game is going to hit full bore from here on and I think we're going to have a pretty expedient end to the series well not expedient end but you get what I mean a continuance of the series that is expedient there I knew I could word it properly Deadbolt Deadbolt is a cool game I started it up a couple days ago and it's another game that surprised me I figured it would be pretty awesome because once again it's from a reputable it's from a source that's made other really badass indie games it's from the company that made Risk of Rain I found that I've enjoyed my time with it I get frustrated with it because I want my hands to do things like it's all about the reaction it's a game that is all about reaction it's all about speed it's all about moving and it's all about knowing your resources and adapting when the plan goes wrong because it will and in that way, you only get one bullet until you die. It's like Hotline Miami. You don't have a whole lot of chances to mash your way through and survive. And so, like, every single shot has to count. You gotta be getting people right between the eyes. You gotta be ducking behind cover when you need it. And sometimes it's just like, Argh! like, I can't get my hands to do the things that I want. And so, I actually beat it. I sat down and I beat it last night. So, all of the, all the footage is done. It'll probably finish up. I think the final episode is scheduled to go up on Wednesday of next week. And that'll be it for Deadbolt. Nice little storyline hidden up inside of there. I also very much like the like the diversity of the weapons. I like all the different ways that you can play through the game. You can like 100% mash your way through the game as a melee, as a ranged guy. Like sometimes you'll have to use a ranged weapon as a secondary if you're a melee guy. But all in all, it seems like they gave you a lot of options in the way that you wanted to deal with it. Probably quite. It's not quite as diverse 
as like Hotline Miami, for example, which Hotline Miami is just like a buffet table of murder. Like every single room is just like stacked with random things you can use in order to kill the enemy. Deadbolt is a little bit more focused than that. By limiting the amount of weapons and making each weapon do a very specific thing, they force you to play the game in a way that I think is a lot less breakneck. I think that Deadbolt is a little bit more, it's a little bit more contemplative than Hotline Miami, but Hotline Miami is a little bit more pulse pounding. But both games are kind of going after the same thing. The one shot kills, clear out the level and wipe everybody out. Your reflexes will determine whether or not you make it. And I've been excited about it so far. I do like the way that they've set up all the different gangs that exist in this weird kind of afterlife. How there's zombies and there's vampires and there's demons and there's skeletons. And they're all arranged kind of into different areas and they're all arranged by their sins that they committed in real life. And you're kind of a, a minion of the Reaper out to keep them from escaping back to the real world. Cool stuff. Very, very cool concept for a game. And I think it's quite a lot of fun. I would highly recommend it. It's one of those games that I definitely put my stamp of approval on. I think they did a great job with it. With Dying Light the following, Dying Light the following actually ended yesterday, the day before yesterday, yesterday, or the day before yesterday. Wasn't really pleased with the ending that we got, I kind of felt like it was just like, ah, tie this thing off and let's go. But then again, I think actually the following was a little bit less polished than the original game. The following, I ran into a lot of bugs, I fell through the world a bunch of times, I had issues with the following. And whereas I liked the game because it was more of the same from the original, plus they added a car on in, I definitely think it probably could have used another couple of weeks of just like bug fixing and polishing. But aside from that, the ending felt a little bit rushed. I was like, oh, so we're just going to blow up like all of Haran. By the way, don't like, spoiler alert, don't watch the rest of this video or at least skip ahead or something if you're worried about ruining the following for yourself. But it was 30 episodes. I mean, we got more playtime out of it than I expected. I thought it was probably going to last like 10 hours maybe because most like DLC type things that you get for open world games. They tend to just add like one little facet. And when you take them together, for example, I never buy any of the Fallout expansions when they come out. I wait till they do like the game of the year edition and then I get them all then and I pile them on in because I find that a lot of the expansions from like Bethesda type stuff and other games, open world games where you can run around and do whatever you want, I usually find that they're not enough to inspire me to play the game through again fully. So if you add like six of them on though, you'd be like, oh, now I want to go do all this stuff. But Dying Light the following, I definitely felt like they were finishing off the game, just being like, that's it, it's done, like, done. There is no more Kyle, like, it's finished, you will not see another sequel. And so it's kind of an interesting place to end the game off, I suppose that that kind of faints and it kind of throws out there that there will be new characters if they ever do Dying Light 2 or anything like that, maybe there will be like a new cast of characters in a new setting. Uh, with the alternates, so there's two endings to the game, one of the alternates is that Kyle ends up taking the disease to the mainland which is in a completely different area, and I'm assuming that's the timeline that they're going to follow through with because that just seems more likely to me. It seems more fertile for creating more dialogue and more content. And then the other one is just that we blew up the virus using a nuclear bomb and we just raised the entire country of Iran in order to keep the virus from escaping. And so I'm assuming whenever the next game comes out that it's going to have its own new cast of characters and Kyle won't even be anything more than a mention in some paperwork or something like that. Depending on the way that they go through, it could go a lot of different ways. I mean, I guess they could go in like a prototype direction with it where he's like a sentient undead thing where he's just like jumping all over walls. God, what a badass game. Prototype was so sick when it came out. That game changed my life for like a month. I played so much Prototype when I got it. It was a really badass game. If you never checked out Prototype 1 or Prototype 2, they are a lot of fun. They're kind of like a darker, edgier version of... God, what's the name of that? There was a PS... Ugh, there was a PS3 exclusive that was basically like the same thing. You were do with superpowers, but it was kind of like a PG-13 version. Like, there wasn't quite as much violence or anything like that. Infamous. There we go. That was the name of the game. Infamous was cool, too, but I think I liked Prototype better. I think I liked Prototype a lot better. Prototype, I think, nailed down that feeling of being like a god among men, where you could like punch the ground, like tanks would fly up into the air, and you could like beat people to death with a helicopter. It was great. It was a fantastic game. This is how good games are made. This is how good games are made. Battlefleet Gothic Armada. I like that game too. It's getting a little repetitive right now in the skirmish mode, but I'm thinking I probably got like another 10 episodes in me before I'll wind it on up. Really, my intent there was since the campaign mode didn't really give us much of an indication as to what was going to be in the game, instead, I wanted to play the skirmish for a little while so that you could see some of the ships that they were adding and some of the cool, fun stuff that was going to be available further into the campaign once you play for a little while. So far, I think we've made it up two weight classes on our ships, and then there's a third one that we haven't unlocked yet. The fights have gotten pretty complicated. They have gotten a 
little bit nastier, and I have struggled with some of them. And I think that's mostly just due to the fact that I'm not very good at the game. I haven't memorized all the little things I need to be doing at any given moment. And at the same time, sometimes I automate stuff a little bit too much, and I should be triggering it manually. And so I get myself into trouble in that way as well. However, Battlefleet Gothic is turning out to be one of those 40k titles that I think is going to be polished. I think it is going to be a lot of fun. And I think the final version is going to be something that you're going to want to sit up and take notice of because 40k doesn't get good IPs very often. Neither does Warhammer Fantasy. Both of those are ridiculously underutilized. Like when games come out for them, they tend to be done by very, very small developers who don't have the resources to actually create a game that takes place inside such a large and well-developed universe. Warhammer's been around since like the early 80s. It's been around for a long ass time. And so there's just so much development in the universe that when you give it to a small team, they can only do like bare minimum explanations of everything. And what you really want when you do anything in 40k or anything in Warhammer is you need like a lexicon available or some kind of omnibus or some kind of like random help file you can look at to be like explain everything that's going on in the universe. They keep referencing this thing. Why are these people heretics? Why are we shooting this guy in the face? Who is this guy with the super awesome hat that keeps shooting his own troops? Like, you, you've got to have the universe explained a little bit, because otherwise, it's tough to get into. I remember my first 40k game was Dawn of War. My first video game that got me into 40k was the first Dawn of War. I bought it because people said it was a really good RTS. And it turned out to be pretty badass, and that was my introduction. And then from there, I spent all, ki all kinds of time on 1D4chan and on a bunch of other places just kind of like learning about it and then I started buying like the tabletop books and everything and it just expanded from there and your knowledge just sort of accumulates about the universe and the games tend to be a lot more fun if you know a little bit of something something about the universe because it just makes things flow more freshly and so you should definitely keep an eye on Battlefleet Gothic if you're into real-time strategy gaming if you're into competitive gaming if you're into just like story rich campaigns I'm excited to see what's coming down the pipe with that one and so I've got it all taken care of. We're going to probably do five or six more episodes of The Skirmish, but after that, if they haven't released the campaign yet, I'll probably give it a little break, and then we'll come back once the campaign releases, possibly. Either way, seems good to me. The Shadowrun London started last week. If you missed it on Wednesday, the VODs should be going up at some point. I think we've got them scheduled to go up on, like, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night or something like that. I'm not totally sure about the release schedule and how it's going to go. Basically, we're going to have, like... The plan, so we're going to have the meet on Friday, the plan on Saturday, and the run on Sunday, I think is how we're planning on scheduling it out. I'm not totally sure. Uh, it was one of the biggest Shadowrun streams to ever take place on Twitch TV. We had 1,200 viewers at one point. It was, it was bumping. It was bumping and it was going. If you haven't heard about it, basically I'm playing a tabletop RPG called Shadowrun right now with Enter Elysium, with Avic, with Shen Plays, and with Stijo, all people from here on YouTube. And it was... Pretty big. A 1,200 person stream is, that's a large stream right there. That's definitely one of the bigger streams that you could be a part of. I've never been a part of a stream that large, and so it was very, very exciting for me. The first run lasted about six and a half hours. We went from two in the afternoon till about 8.30 at night, and it was a complete and total blast. I don't really know what else to say about it. The chemistry was there. We were having a lot of fun. The run went horribly awry, as they always do. Things kind of fell apart. I mean, from the beginning, it was just a mess. From the beginning, it was just a mess, and we just adapted to the stimuli as best as we could as we went in and through, but if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you start it out. We've created a role-playing group called Roll For It, R-O-L-L, -L for IT, and so you can find that at twitch.tv slash roll for it, and then you can find it at YouTube dot com slash roll for it where the VODs will be backed up and then you can watch it live if you wanted to as for right now these are kind of like practice runs for us but we wanted to do them live to get a feel for what it felt like to have a viewership and an audience and so we don't have anything set up in terms of like donations or anything like that because we want to get it all crisp and we want to get it all clean before people start like investing in this show we want to make sure that everything is running the way that it's supposed to run but if you didn't know i stream on mondays wednesdays and fridays wednesday streams have now been changed to take place in the afternoon so that i can stream tabletop all day and then mondays and fridays are still video games and so it's been an absolute blast if you missed out on it the vods will be up so you don't have to miss out on it for too long I thought it was one of the best times I've had in a long time, and so I would recommend that everybody show up and at least give it a little bit of a gander, because the personalities that we have at Raid really are quite fun. Last week, we covered Switch Cars. If you checked out Switch Cars, fun little game, right? It's a cool game. It's one of those games that you can play for like 25 minutes and not really 
you know, have to invest too much brain power into it, you get chased by a giant dick worm. I mean, how intellectual could it get? At the same time, the game feels crisp, it feels clean, I love the graphics, the music is solid. The sheer amount of unlockables that you can get after inside of that game are just mind-boggling, and that combined with the combination of consumables that you can add onto every single car just made that one an instant winner for me. So if you hadn't checked out that weekly indie newcomer, I highly recommend that you do. It was really, really fun. It's kind of one of those little Sunday afternoon games, but I do recommend it, and I did have a lot of fun with it. That brings us to Tom Clancy's The Division. Vision. I will be picking that up and continuing. I messed up and my recording schedule got messed up. The thing that's taking place on Wednesday, it eats up a lot of time and I've yet to properly adjust. Like, you know how in your work schedule, when things change a lot, like things just move around on you and then from there, you've got to like rearrange the rest of your week in order to get everything work. Well, I'm still waiting for the dust to settle. I'm still kind of in the blizzard in the snow globe right now and eventually it will settle and I'll get it all sorted. We are still playing The Division. It has not been canceled. I wanted to make that clear because some people have commented about it and been like, hey, where the hell has The Division been? And it's just, I haven't. I got one episode right now in my backlog, and I'm going to be gone all weekend, so I'll probably put that up Saturday or Sunday just to kind of like slake your lust for modern military murder. And then from there, we'll probably I'll probably record it on Monday or something like that just to get a few more episodes up so that you guys can enjoy that and have a good time. But aside from that... There's not really a whole lot else going on. If you watched yesterday, Weekly Any Newcomer was a game called War Tile. War Tile, very, very fun little game. I highly recommend War Tile. It's actually in Kickstarter right now, and I'll give you a Kickstarter link down below if I forget to do it on the video. Either way, War Tile is a game that right now they sent me a tech demo for it. When I get tech demos, I'm always a little bit apprehensive because tech demos tend to be a little bit like shitty like it is what it is it's a tech demo war tile turned out to be pretty awesome if you like mountain blade warband if you like tabletop gaming if you like miniatures gaming it's a real-time turn-based it's a real-time turn-based hybrid viking battle squad game in which you're on a hex grid and it's got like these beautiful like little hand-painted figurines and they fight each other and when they die they explode in pieces of plastic it's a really really fun little game that's kind of hearkening it's like if you took rts mountain blade warband and then mixed it with like army men or something like that it's a fun little game and i'm gonna do a weekly any newcomer on it. it's already been cut it's already been edited and all that kind of stuff it's gonna be up for you yesterday so if you missed that video make sure you check it out youtube has been really really weird over the last week or two with notifications I my numbers have been all over the place statistically I think YouTube broke something and they're like desperately trying to fix it right now because normally YouTube graphs are fairly steady like they just kind of stay even and right now they're doing like this weird sawtooth like shark tooth thing where they just go up and down day by day just doing all kinds of weirdness and randomness and so I think YouTube is doing some major back-end work right now, so I'm doing my best to point out the fact that I have been publishing things, and I have been doing things, and they're still available, and they still exist. You may just have to dig through my uploads list in order to get at them. I will do my best to get my playlist updated and everything taken care of over the course of this week, but that's just about everything we got going on for the Weekend Review. My name is Flattercat. This is the Weekend Review, a Sunday series where you and I sit down for a little while. We talk about the things that are going on at the channel. I will have some news for you. I got some important, like, personal news about me. It's coming up soon, but I, I just I haven't had time to get it all sorted out and decide how I want to announce it or anything like that. Just be aware, exciting things are in the future. Things are happening. Things are moving. Things are going on for me in real life outside the internet as well, and so it's a very chaotic time for me. So if I seem addle-brained or I'm not following through with things, I apologize greatly, but that's just where I'm at right now. Weekend Review is the time where I talk about that in order to, like, explain at least a little bit of that entropy sometimes i'm successful sometimes i'm not it was actually funded by the patreon backers so thank you to all of you for giving me the opportunity to make videos is very very generous if we get more donations the next series that comes up is a sit down and talk kind of podcast chat show with other youtubers and so i think that's actually coming up not super soon but pretty soon I think it'll reach its funding goal so anyways if you wanted those links they're all available down below the channel is a loot crate partner so if you wanted to get loot crate that's another great way to support the channel I will see you all later thanks for stopping on by hi do everybody and I'll see you in two weeks